called it the Cinder Knight. What came from those dark, starless skies would change the world of Moss forever. The peace that had settled across the land was broken by an unconquerable nightmare. And that night, the animals nearly met their end. First, they killed the king. A winged creature broke from the shadows and plucked him from his royal bedchamber high atop the tallest tower. Next, the serpent Sarfog and the armies of the Arcane tore up from the underworld. They ravaged the castle in search of that which gave the king power beyond understanding. One of the fabled glass relics. The king's guard fought bravely, but the castle soon pulsed with the arcane's evil. Every room was gutted, every statue, tapestry, and adornment hexed. But the glass was never found. Even the reclusive sprites set aside their differences on that faded night. They sent a great champion, empowered by their own glass relic, to challenge the serpent and its steel army. Meanwhile, Sir Argus, commander of the King's Guard, led the survivors west through a temple long abandoned by their ancestors and far away from their newly risen enemies. It was an arduous escape. Finally, after passage beneath the impassable mire, they found refuge in a clearing hidden safely in the trees. Argus charged back to join the Sprite Champion at the Mire's edge. Together, they fought back the Arcane and sealed the Temple Passage that led to the clearing. But the Champion was gravely injured. Clutching his glass, he retreated deep into the forest where he drew his last breath. A large tree grew upon him. It stood many years in watchful duty, safeguarding the glass and awaiting its next hero. That hero, albeit an unlikely one, did arrive at a time she'd be needed most. Quill was out adventuring beyond the edge of the clearing. Dusk was creeping in, but she wondered what she might find if she went just a little farther.
She was not exactly sure what she roused, but she felt no danger from the being silently peering down at her. Quill had to hurry. The village gates would soon close, and night would follow. Night, her uncle often warned, was when danger was most present. But Quill preferred the stories of the magical creatures that woke to protect the forest.
Her new friend, Quill had saved priceless grains from the hourglass. She raced to the door of the cottage she shared with her uncle, hoping once he saw her discovery, he'd lose himself in tales of its legend. Uncle Argus was watching the evening light dim when Quill burst through the front door of their cottage. Uncle! Uncle, there's something you have to see! Out past the bell again, he scolded. Quill, I've told you countless times. I know, Quill replied, crestfallen. 
I didn't mean to worry you. But I found something strange and magical. Will's hands trembled as she showed him the glass. What is it? she asked. A look of panic spilled over her uncle's stoic exterior. Where did you find this? roared Uncle Argus. Will had never seen her uncle so shaken. Just west of the clearing, she explained. And as soon as I picked it up, Something started... helping me. Uncle Argus followed her motion. A reader. With you, here, right now? Quill, what you found is very powerful and very dangerous. He said with great concern. If I could take this burden from you, I would. But this reader has chosen. Even with the moon full and bright, I must go right away. Quill pressed. Where are you going? I can help. We can help. No, he snapped. They'll find you and tear you apart. I have to go alone. It is for your own safety and for everyone here in the clearing. His long, heartfelt hug told her he was heading for danger. I'll be back before midnight. Until I return, I need your word you will not leave the clearing with that glass. Promise me, Quill. I promise, she said reluctantly, wondering where her uncle was going so deep into the night. Kid! Kid! Wake up! Hey kid, over here! I know where your uncle went. I can show you. You're twofold now. Very important. Bring that glass and your sidekick too. We're going to need them. Quill called out. Hey! Starthing, wait! Quill had never met a Starthing. In campfire stories, they often meddled in the lives of mortals. And when they appeared, mischief followed. Passage through the Eastern Gate was strictly forbidden. But despite her promise, Quill knew in her heart that Uncle Argus needed her. demanded answers. Starthing, you can't just barge in here with your riddles. Where is he? What do you know? The trouble your uncle's heading for is the kind only you and that silent giant up there can get him out of.
this way, kid. Urge the starving. And don't forget to tuck your ears in. Just on the other side is the mire, the starving assured her. There's a good chance your uncle's still there. Did you hear that? The starving seemed anxious. I've ruffled enough leaves in these parts. I can't be seen with you. I'll catch up with you later. Just don't go and die on me.
whisper echoed through the trees. Fought like someone who has stolen our champion's power. A small yet fantastical band of sprites emerged surrounding Quill. I'm Veda, root seer of the mire. And you have crossed into our domain. She sized up Quill with a rueful gaze, then turned her attention upward. I sense you there, too. I have not felt the presence of such a promising breeder in some time. A youthful warrior marched forward. Rootseer! I'm prepared to honor our great champion's legacy. Rodent, give us our glass. Quill stepped closer. Where is my uncle? If you've hurt him... Silence! Veda thundered back. It was Argus who summoned us here, and now I see why. Young one. I'm afraid the trees hum of attack. Your uncle's been taken to the castle of your ancestors. Quill's knees buckled as Veda continued. Argus put himself at great risk calling for us. Your uncle once took a solemn oath to protect the glass of your fallen king. He is the only one left who knows where it's been hidden. The Arcane have long sought to wrest that knowledge from him. And do you dare to cross into the mire with our glass? Sarfog will soon burn through this forest looking to tear you and your reader apart. Unless, of course, you find them first. Take these. Weapons made for the mighty champion who died so that your people could live. Quill felt its otherworldly power course through her. Find your uncle, Twofold, before the serpent and its masters break him. The warrior fumed. Our glass with her? Ruthseer, she's minuscule. Come now. The reader has chosen its hero. We must let their story unfold, Veda replied with a frost of finality, and vanished into the shadows of the mire. <laughs>